we want to prove this Model's theorem. So this theorem says that group of rational points on a non-singular cubic curve, for example, an elliptic curve, these are finitely generated. So before we can prove this, we have to define certain notions. So the first notion is that of a height of a rational number. So say we are given a rational number x as m over n. So height of x, you write it like this, capital H of x, is maximum of absolute value of m or n. So you take absolute value of numerator and absolute value of denominator and take their maximum. That is considered as height. So the first thing to notice about this height is that there is a finiteness property. So the set of rational numbers whose height is less than a fixed number, so say a constant c, so height is less than say some constant number c, then this set of rational numbers is finite. Now this is easy to see. So this is our definition of the height, this is less than a constant, so these are both absolute values. So both are positive integers. And there are only finitely many ways in which you can fill either m or n because they are bounded above and since they are positive, they are bounded below. So there are only finitely many integer choices for both m and n. So therefore you can only construct a finite number of rational numbers out of them. So this is the finiteness property of height. Now we want to transfer this notion to our non-singular cubic or elliptic curve. So say we are given this curve over rationals like this, y square is equal to x cube plus ax square plus bx plus c. Now we put a, b, c as integers. So there is some point p which lies on this curve. So coordinates of this point is x and y. So we want to define the height of this rational point. So there, in this case we just focus on the first coordinate. So x is a rational number, y is a rational number because this curve is on rationals. So for this height of the point is defined as height of x which is a rational number and we have to obviously talk about the special point that is always given the height 1. Now we talk about the finiteness property on our curve. So this is our set of points lying on the curve. So the points P which satisfy this equation. So x comma y they are of this form where x and y both have rational coordinates. So we are saying this set is, has a, is a finite set. Now this is a finite set precisely because for the height you only consider the x coordinate. And uh, now this x will only have finitely many possibilities precisely because of this finiteness property of height. So x has only finite many possibilities. So to every x you put in an x you can have at most two values for y. And since you can have at most two values for y, there are only finitely many points which satisfy this equation. So this is the finiteness property on the curve. So another definition we want to make is about small height. So small height is just log of this big height. So notice that this small height is always a positive real number. Precisely because h of p as you can see is just maximum of numerator or denominator. Since numerator and denominator are both integers, so this will be log of some uh, positive integer because you have absolute values here. So log of positive integer and the lowest possible integer would be 1. So therefore lowest value is 0 and otherwise it is always positive. So now we talk about height of P plus P0. So to this point P on the curve we add this point P0. So this height of P plus P0 this is less than twice height of p plus kappa naught. So this result we have not proved, we are just stating it. So where this p0 is some given point on our curve and this kappa naught depends upon this given point and a, b and c. So these a, b and c which are the uh, uh, coordinates here on the curve, these a, b and c. So third is doubling the point increases the height. So say you have point P on the curve, you can always use the addition formula and double them. So then height of 2P, the small height is greater or equal to 4 times height of 
point P minus kappa, where kappa in turn depends upon A, B, C. The kappa depends upon these coordinates A, B, and C. So there are four things we have to uh, assume or prove before we can come to model's theorem. But if these four things are proven, then we can prove the model's theorem. Finally, we have the finite index. So you know there is a group law on our elliptic curve where you can add two points P and Q. And then we can consider a subgroup of this group where we consider the points which are double the other points. So rather than considering P and Q, we add points of the form 2P and 2Q. So this group we denote by 2CQ. Then this CQ over 2CQ, this uh, take the index, this is finite. So if we show these four things, 1, 2, 3 and 4, then we can prove the model theorem. So 1 we have already shown. So this is done. So we still have to show 2, 3 and 4. Now we formally state the theorem. So this is called the descent theorem because it uses Fermat's descent method. So suppose there is a function from our commutative group on the curve or any point on the curve, obviously the points form a group. This you denote as gamma. So you take the point and you assign to it this small height. As you can see, small height is like this. So it goes, it lies between 0 and infinity. And it has the following four properties, which are just going to copy. This is property 1. Set of points lying on the curve. Gamma is just our curve. Such that height of the point is less than or equal to C. This is finite. So this is just copying this condition right here. So instead of C, uh, Q, we are just writing gamma. So this is this condition is just copied right here. Similarly here, this is the height of point P plus P0. Again, you choose P0 on our curve. So height of P plus P0 is, is less than or equal to twice H of P plus kappa 0. Right here. Similarly, you uh, take the doubling of the point, copy it right here. And finally, you take this. So instead of CQ, we are writing gamma. 2 CQ, you are writing 2 gamma and you are saying this is finite. So if you have these four conditions, then this gamma is finitely generated. So this we will prove in the next lecture, assuming these four hold. We have already proved one. So everything you can find in this book, rational points on elliptic curves by Silverman and Tate.